Okay, I wanted to do a video today on, I was using Borax and I was doing this dog photo and I thought, well, I've got it and it's not been edited or nothing. I'll just show the video of exactly how I do it. So, because I changed up how I do it a little bit. What I do now is go to an adjustment layer and go to gradient map. And it gives you this, which is a bit dark. Then if you change this to linear, or you can try the others, classic. So I'll keep it on linear. This linear is the one I use. And then um, I'll put a black and white adjustment layer. That's better, yeah, sorry. The black and white adjustment layer has to go below. And now you can mess with these a bit to kind of bring back some of the detail and some won't do anything in that case I'll just turn them right off same with that one blue yeah it's nearly all in the reds and yellows for this so I'll leave that at that and then I just want to show I'm going to zoom in a bit here you can see how this is at the moment this really helps for mine at least anyway doing it in ImageR now I have shown this before, but you duplicate the, you duplicate your object twice, invert the top one, go to go to vivid light, and there it go grey like that, and then go to filter blur Gaussian blur, and then mess around a little bit with this. Really, you want like a nice little sketch outline. I'm gonna go sink around there you can always go back if you don't like the outcome when you've done it so you click that now I hold down control and click the layer below so they're both selected and then press control and G to group them two and here now where it says pass through change this to overlay and I'll just show the difference there you can see how it is there if I turn that off what I just did you can see how you know soft that gives it a lot more you know definition and now what I would do is I'm pretty happy about that is if anything if I want to brighten this up a little bit I'll just quickly show because uh, make a solid color layer change it to white put it like right on the top of everything and then you can that's how it originally was so I just wanted to brighten it up a little bit all over so I'm just going to go there 12 percent the file export save for web jpeg maximum that's the size it is and click save save it wherever you save it and from there you're going to go to image R and then upload find where you saved it which mine was here Once it loads up in here, you're going to go to resize, change pixels to inches, and change your dots per inch to what suits your laser. Mine, what I'm using and what works for me is 260 dots per inch. I'm going to keep the size the same, 10 by 11. Okay. And you just wait for this to do its thing. Yeah, it's done that. So you can see nothing much has changed there and now you pick your material that is going onto mine's going onto wood so I've got a CO2 laser it's going onto wood okay and then you let it do its thing again yep that's done so now you can see what it's done now zoom this in a bit so you can see a bit better it's made it more recognizable basically for the laser that, that is how I get to my finished image you can preview with material I'm going to be using birch and I will put a comparison between this photo and the actual finished project that I've got okay so now the last thing to do is download it download it as a BMP this will pop up just close it yeah so once it downloads you'll see it down the bottom here and just drag it over over the top of your light burn and then drop it in there and that's it and then up here for my speeds and powers I've done a 350 speed and a 12 power that's all you need with borax because you don't want to be removing material you just want to be leaving the 
burn 260 dots per inch like you said on image R and then click pass through all this is switch off now but you'll see that will be correct so let me just quickly do a preview so yeah that's the preview and I'll get to cutting it now You want to cut your wood roughly down to the size because when you wet it, if you've got a big piece, it's going to start to bulge up. You ain't going to be able to clamp it down. So now that's framed in there. I'm going to put a couple clamps. And then this, it's still warm. So it ain't been long since I've done it. So I'm just going to pour a bit of that on there. And one thing I find important when you're doing borax you want it a little bit out of focus because what you don't really want, you don't want to be removing material so much because you'll be removing the borax with it. So what I normally do is, okay so my normal focus is 6 millimeters, and these it's about 685. So that's what I normally do it, I just know that them two pieces normally work out nice, so sit that right on top of them. Make sure that ain't bulged up too much. That should be ready to go now. I mean I can still feel it still feels a little bit wet. Okay, so I've got a 350 speed, 12 power, and the image mode is set to pass through because I've already did divvered the image in image R so I don't want to be using another image mode like diver because then you get double differing so yeah and you see that's just finished and like I say now you can't touch it because otherwise it will smudge so you have to give it a clear coat now, and that's what I'm going to do next. Yeah, and you can see, that's dried now. Let me rub across that. Won't be no problem. So yeah, the borax is nice as long as you clear coat it. If you touch it before you clear coat it, then you basically, you know, it's done. But gives a much nicer contrast than the just normal wood burn. So again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll add another video as soon as possible.